In this video, I will show you how to add a knockback effect feedback for a melee attack system. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. Here is my starter project, I have a barrel that I can destroy by hitting it and I have an enemy that will chase me, I can also hit him to destroy the enemy. I would like to extend this system with a knockback effect. Now you can learn how to set this project up from my previous tutorials, the link will be in the description. Now the most important part is that my player and the enemy are driven by a dynamic rigid body, because this will make it easy for us to implement this knockback feedback. To apply our knockback feedback we are going to use rigidbody2d.addForce method, which takes in the vector to force, which is basically the direction and the strength with which we want to apply this knockback force, as well as the force mode 2D. If we select the force mode 2D, at the bottom we will find that there are two types, the force, which basically allows you to add the force continuously, and impulse, which adds the force instantly, uh, so that it, the full force is added when we call this method. Okay, so this is the plan, all we need to do is go to our scripts and create a new script, so let me right click, create a new c -sharp script, I'm going to call it knockback, feedback, and I will open it up. Okay, great, now I will paste the fields that we are going to need. First of all, we are going to have a serialized field, a private rigid body 2D, rigid body 2D, and this is because we need to have a reference on which rigid body should we apply this force. Next, we are going to have a serialized field private float and we are going to have two floats. The strength value will control how powerful the knockback is and the delay is the time delay after which we are going to allow the enemy or the player to move again. This will allow us to fine tune the knockback feedback as we like, not relying on uh, when the rigid body stops in fact moving, but rather we are going to control it uh, by this delay uh, value. After this we are going to have a public unity event on begin and on done. To be able to use this Unity event, right click on this quick action and say using Unity Engine.Events, this library will allow us to use those Unity events. Great. So now, first of all, we need to start by creating a coroutine that will actually allow us to stop the knockback feedback. To do this, I'm going to create a private I enumerator. And I'm going to call this reset. So the idea is that after this delay, I want to reset the knockback feedback to stop working on our rigid body. So I'm going to yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and I want to pass the delay as the input. For now it is 0.15 of a second. After we have uh, done that, we have waited, we are going to call rigid body, so rb 2 d reference dot velocity, and since the force applied some velocity uh, in a specific direction, we are going to reset it, to, uh, we are going to set it to be vector3.0, so that we are going to make this uh, enemy or item stop moving, and at the end we are going to call on done event, question mark dot invoke, so we are going to invoke this event in case we want to apply some additional logic after the knockback feedback is done, and this will be useful when we apply this knockback feedback to our enemy object. Great! So we have a way to reset our knockback feedback, now let's create a method that will allow us to apply it. So let's create public, void, and we are going to call it play feedback. And we are going to take as an input game object sender. Okay. Now we need to take in the sender object because we need to know in which direction we should apply this knockback feedback. So if a player attacks the enemy, we are going to calculate the direction from the player to the enemy so that we know in which direction we should push the enemy to create this knockback effect. Now since we know that we want to use coroutine to stop the feedback, we are going to first stop all coroutines in case another coroutine is already running because we do not want to reset the feedback too soon. Now next we want to call on begin question mark dot invoke in case we want to begin some other functionalities uh, when we start our knockback feedback. Again, this will be useful for our enemy object. Next, we are going to need to have a direction. So vector2 direction, 
we are going to calculate it using the transform dot position so our position minus the sender dot transform dot position which would give us the direction from the sender to our object and we are going to normalize it so we are going to get this uh, with the magnitude one now this is important because we want to use this strength to apply the strength to this uh, force so we want to have this direction normalized and now we can apply this by calling rigid body 2d so rb 2d dot add force and we are going to calculate the direction times the strength and this should give us the correct strength of our notebook feedback and we are going to apply force mode 2d dot impulse to apply this force uh, with the full strength immediately onto our object so this line will make our enemy or the object fly in the opposite direction from our player or whoever has hit our object. And in the end, we again want to start the coroutine and we want to pass our reset method because this is a coroutine. So we want to reset at some point our knockback effect uh, and set the velocity back to zero. Technically, we could allow our uh, rigid body 2D to lose the velocity because of the friction, but in our case where we have a melee combat, we want the enemy to immediately jump back to the action, so we want to fine-tune this using this delay. Great, so this is all for our knockback feedback script. Let's save this, let's go back to Unity. Okay, so in my project, as I have mentioned, I have already this item, so the barrel which is not moving, but it already has the rigid body 2D that is dynamic, so that we can apply this feedback onto it. And it has the health script, I talked about it in my previous tutorial, it allows us to detect when something has hit this barrel, it has the health value and it has those two events, on hit and on death, both takes the game object as an input, this is because we want to add some custom feedback and we want to know who has hit the uh, object or the enemy or the, in this case the barrel. So now I can drag here our, my knockback feedback script and I can add in this on hit event I can use this plus icon and I can call this knockback feedback from this event by calling this knockback feedback and selecting at the top play feedback method or you can call it from your own script. The vital part is that we know who has hit us and this is where my health script comes in. So now my knockback feedback should work. It has the rigid body field which I need to assign so I will assign this rigid body 2D from my item and for the strength it is 16, for the delay it is 0.15 and I do not have any callbacks for my events. So let me press play. Okay, I'm in my game, I will uh, attack the barrel and as you can see it flew away from my player so the knockback feedback works. So I will kill the enemy. So now we should be able to apply the same sort of feedback for our enemy. So let's go back to our project. Now so far if you are enjoying this tutorial, if you find it helpful, please leave a like, subscribe and you can also uh, use thanks button at the bottom of this video to help me out. Thanks a lot. Okay, so let's try applying the same sort of feedback for the enemy when it is hit. So again, my enemy is using the health uh, component and it has the rigid body so it should all work. Let me assign the knockback feedback on the enemy and I will select the knockback feedback, assign here the rigid body reference. To the health script I can add an event, the callback for the on hit event and I will drag the knockback feedback and call the knockback feedback method play feedback and basically it should all be set. So let's test it. Okay, so let me try attacking the enemy and nothing really happens, there is no knockback feedback. So what is going on? Let me press stop and uh, let me select the enemy. So my enemy is driven through this enemy AI script that I explained in my previous tutorial and by the agent mover script. So both of those scripts affect the rigid body 2D, meaning that even if we apply the force on the enemy, the agent mover script resets the velocity uh, because the agent, the enemy wants to move towards my player. So to prevent this, we need to disable those two components. Now we cannot disable the rigid body because then we are going to also disable the force that we have applied. So we need to use this on begin event and I'm going to drag the enemy AI object or the script reference and the uh, agent mover but I will still need to select the script, the functions. So I'll select the enemy AI 
and I will select the enabled bool and I will select leave this uh, checkbox unchecked and do the same for my mo agent mover enabled and disable it. This should disable both of those scripts when we start our knockback feedback and I will in the on done select my agent mover and select my enemy AI although I still will have to select the specific uh, methods I will select the agent mover enabled and I will check this box this time and I will select the enemy AI enabled and check this box to re-enable those components and now no other component will affect the rigid body while the knockback feedback is applied so let me press play okay let me uh, try attacking the enemy and as you can see now the knockback feedback is working correctly this means that we can now apply it to moving objects great and now we can of course add different types of feedbacks for example i have this time freeze feedback we should freeze the time uh, for 0.02 seconds so let me apply 0.1 second and i will select my health script and again add a new event apply my time freeze feedback time freeze play feedback and if I press play now, okay, and now you should f see this time freeze feedback. This should add a bit of suspension to the attack action and should improve the feedback or the juiciness of your game. You can learn more about this time freeze feedback and other types of feedback in my Make It Juicy 2D Shooter Prototype video course. The link will be in the description. You can also explore the Unity Shader Bible to learn more about the visual effects and applying visual feedback to your game. Okay, thanks a lot for watching, I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial, in the next one I'm going to try to tackle the context uh, behavior AI system for our enemy to improve the AI quality. Okay, see you in the next tutorial.